Alright, so in this first video, I just wanted to talk about some of the things we might actually uh, use to create the model, um, and then maybe do an unboxing, show you what actually comes in the, the box, um, what you can expect to, to get out of the kit, and then also uh, what you might have to supply of your own. And not all of this will be necessary, um, but this is, I think, what I used in the building um, to just kind of help me along. You, you could remove some of the items uh, without any trouble. Alright, so first, this is what we're building, and this is me post-flight. Um, so I've already, I've already flown this one um, with uh, reasonable success. I'm, I'm not great at flying them, actually, um, so I'm still learning that, but uh, this, is, this is what we're going for. So I'll start off with the glues. You're going to wind up using several. Um, this is uh, a wood glue. Tight Bond is the brand. Um, normally, you want to go with a Tight Bond 2. It tends to hold stronger and it's more waterproof. Uh, this is just what my hobby store had, and I knew it would be sufficient for my uses. Uh, I don't tend to get things wet, um, so it's and I don't use much of it. I tend to go with um, cyanoacrylate or CA glue or super glue. Um, so this works for me, but. Um, Type on 2 would be better if you had it. What I use most often is uh, CA glue or cyanoacrylate, uh, also known as uh, super glue. Um, this is what I've been using right so far, or mostly, is the Instant Jet, um, the Thin. Um, you can see, I well, maybe you can't see because it's not, uh, well, this one's got, you can see how thin that is. It's almost like water. Uh, very thin. It, it wicks into the, the gaps really easily. Um, I bought a big bottle of it, and I use the little bottle, and I'll just twist off this cap here, and then use it to refill, because this is a little easier to handle when I'm working with small objects. Um, I also use these applicator tips. They're made by Jet and for this. Um, they'll slide right on the top there and give me a really fine point, and then I can also kind of reach into to tough areas. Um, and I just bought a packet of them. So you can see here, um, it was two dollars, and I think it came with six six pieces here. So um, I can use them a few times. So I'll put it on. I'll use it for you know an hour or two. I take it off. I'll clean the tip, um, and then I'll actually I'll actually blow through here, being careful not to get my lips um, on the tip here. I'll just put my lips like kind of like this way down here at the bottom, and just let nothing touch the tip there. And then uh, it'll kind of clean it out a little bit. I can use it probably four or five times like that before it starts becoming a problem, and then I'll toss it. Um, so they're a little bit reusable. Also, I go with a medium uh, cyan acrylate sometimes. It's more for gap filling. If I have a, a piece that uh, just didn't quite line up right uh, and I need some structural integrity there, then I'll go with a medium. This one hasn't been opened. I just finished um, using my last bottle uh, during this build. Um, but uh, this is the same brand, same stuff I used. Um, this is kind of expensive, uh, $15 for the bottle. So I use it sparingly, um, but uh, it works well when I need it. I also like to use something called Canopy Glue. Uh, this is the Formula 560 brand, or Formula 560 uh, by Pacer. Um, I really, really like this. It's, it's a PVA glue, basically, um, but it sticks really well, and it dries perfectly clear. Um, so it's I use it on my canopy for when I'm building plastic scale model kits as well. Um, but uh, sometimes I'll use this if I need to glue something on uh, where I need either strong adhesion really quickly or um, I can't let the glue be seen. I don't think I used it on this model actually, um, but if you're gluing on canopies uh, for, uh, you know, like a bubble canopy for a P51 or something like that, this would work really, really well for that. And then also a 5 minute epoxy. Um, this is really heavy glue, so I don't use it very often when I'm building free flight. I, the only time I use it is if I need to glue like metal to wood or something like that where I really want it to, to uh, glue in. I also use this on the uh, wheel tips so when I need to hold uh, the wheel on so you can kinda see right here where I've got uh, the little ball of glue there that's actually 5 minute epoxy and I'll show how that's done later. Um, I also used it for gluing in the, the wheel there or the wheel struts and then lastly, um, a glue stick. I uh, like the brand Yuhu or Uhu, I'm not sure how you say that. Um, but the biggest thing about it is that it's blue. 
Uh, it goes on blue and it dries clear, so that kind of helps you know when it's done, when it's dried. Um, and this is also alcohol uh, soluble, uh, which helps a lot whenever you're covering. Uh, so it's not water soluble, uh, but you can um, reactivate the glue with alcohol. And I use that to my advantage when I'm covering. Uh, next is going to be a very important tool. Uh, it's going to be your X-Acto blade uh, with extra blades. Um, I'm not super happy with this brand. Um, they tend to, to dull pretty quickly, but I got a hundred of them, and I think they were about 11 cents a piece, so it's not too bad. Um, I just change them out a little more often, um, but you just you know use the exacto blade as you would cut wood. Um, you can cut tissue with this, but it has to be extremely sharp. So I'll always change blades when I'm going to go cut tissue, uh, and I'll make sure that I change blades often if I'm in the middle of uh, cutting a lot of tissue. You'll also want some type of razor saw. Um, I have two different types that I use with uh, this. This is your traditional razor saw. It's just a, a long blade, you know, you can cut something quickly with that. I usually don't use this on balsa uh, unless it's like thick, like a quarter inch or thicker because um, I can cut through pretty quickly with that. Um, I also have these by uh, Tamiya or Tamiya. I'm not really sure how you say that. Um, I've always said Tamiya or Tamiya, but um, they make a lot of good products. So this razor saw here actually, um, they come like this and you'll, you'll cut it out using some type of sharp blade and then you'll fold it on the score line and it will look something like this. Now what's neat about these is your standard size 11 um, knife holder will hold this saw blade now and it has that doubled over to kind of give it a spine and then I've got a very nice saw blade that I can use um, and then you've got different profiles I don't know if you can see that. Um, so it's actually, you can see the teeth on going around the tip uh, and not right onto the back. So I can literally cut, you know, in all the surfaces. All right, next is going to be your wire cutters and then just a various assortment of pliers. I don't use the same ones every time. Um, a needle nose is really nice. These tend to have a better grip if I really need to grab something. Um, this one's a little bit cheaper, so it'll kind of twist this way if I'm not careful, but uh, they still have really good grip. A really nice strong pair of wire cutters is good. And um, yeah, so that's it. Just, you know, when you're bending metal, mostly when you're bending, like I was bending the struts, I think I used uh, all four of these uh, pliers for that. Um, but they come in handy. Uh, and then also just a good set of tweezers. Um, so something if you need to, to grab something and then, you know, push it in. Next, you want various squares. And um, I these are called one, two, three blocks. Adam Savage from Tested is the one that. Um, kind of turned me onto these. Uh, they're extremely helpful. They're, they're kind of heavy. I would say they probably weigh two pounds a piece. Um, so you have to be careful with them when you're working around delicate models. Um, but their weight actually is very helpful in keeping things straight. Um, and then they're designed to be exactly uh, one inch this way, two inches this way, and three inches this way. So they could be used as a measuring device as well. Um, and then they're also perfectly the same. So if you need to use them as Blocks. I think they're used a lot in machining um, for, for giving uh, specific heights to things. Um, and then they're also square. So this, as long as this surface is square, then, then you can expect that to be a 90 degree angle. Um, so I can use them for that. And then I've got you know legitimate uh, hobby squares here. Um, I got four sizes. I'm not sure where the fourth one is, but it's just a little bit smaller to fit in there. Um, and they're also a bit of you know heft, so I can use them for weight as well. Um, but since they have a real narrow profile, it's easy to put them up against something I can glue, and that I don't necessarily have to worry about it gluing too hard to that. It will stick to the metal, uh, CA glue will, but not too much, so it's not too bad. Um, but again, I can use them for weight. I would say next would be an assortment of uh, my T pins. Um, a lot of people don't like to use pins when building with balsa because you traditionally have to put this, you know, like if this is the balsa stick, you'd put it through the balsa in order to hold it and then stick it through into the, the work surface. Um, and that obviously causes a hole in your balsa and, and can split it, especially if it's really, really fine or thin wood, like uh, the 1 16th we're going to be using. Uh, that, would, that, that right there would just split the wood right in half. So you don't want to do that. The alternative is uh, or one alternative is to take, and these are just two different sizes, so this is longer and thicker um, and that's a little smaller and more narrow, uh, depends on what I'm working with, um, but 
the alternative is if this is the stick and this is my work surface to put it in at an angle like this and then I would use the T you know the stick as down pressure in order to hold it in um, I don't like that either um, because it tends to crimp so I found this online and somebody um, th showed this method um, these are actually silicone uh, pads and this is what that looks like you know by itself I just bought a, a 12 inch by 12 inch or maybe 8 inch by 8 inch I can't remember a sheet of silicone and that's 1 8 inch and then I just cut it with a razor blade to the sizes that I needed um, and got a few strips like this um, for if I wanted to, you know, if I needed to push two sides in and then I could have my piece in here um, it would help with keeping it straight and then also this size um, so what I wind up doing is if this is the stick I'll push it in so that this is beside the stick and then this kind of puts the pressure on but the great thing about this is it's really friction fit so I can I can push it into the uh, work surface and then push this silicone pad down until it's putting the right pressure on and it will push up just a little bit so that it gives it uh, right down pressure without uh, hurting the wood at all and this is silicone so I can put this right on a, on a seam and shoot glue under it and the CA glue won't stick to the silicone um, now over time these will become uh, scratched or sticky and the glue will start sticking to it so once that starts happening uh, I'll give it a couple times you can you if it's in here like this you can give it a little twist and it'll release and you can pull it out but if that doesn't really work then once I get it free being as delicate as possible I'll just pull that off throw this one away and then I'll take my silicone um, sheet again and just cut some more and then use them again obviously toothpicks are nice uh, they help with spreading out wood glue they help with uh, holding things down they mix epoxy they do everything um, so having a nice assortment or a, a nice selection of uh, toothpicks on hand is always helpful you'll want some kind of spray bottle uh, I got this this is a dry erase board cleaner that I just washed out real good and then filled it full of uh, the liquid that I need so this happens to be a 50 percent mix of alcohol and water and I'll um, I'll describe more about that in just a minute um, but you'll need a nice spray bottle with a good atomizer on it if it sprays too too many or too big droplets if the droplets are too large then uh, it'll wet your tissue paper too much and you'll want to uh, you'll need that to be more misty more of an atomizer obviously a good pencil I use a mechanical um, doesn't really matter what type what brand but just something to mark with it's not too heavy so the pencil lead doesn't show up too heavily on um, tissue paper and um, balsa itself so that's good scissors um, just common sense cutting tissue paper mostly you're definitely not going to cut balsa with it um, but I use it to cut the plans if I need to uh, after I've f copied them obviously um, and then tissue paper as well now I use an airbrush for mine um, this is the one that I use it's the renegade velocity um, something I really enjoy um, so the reason I chose this particular one is it had it was a reputable brand um, had the double action so um, you know pushing down and pulling back meant something I can adjust the the tension on the spring uh, here um, it's a internal mix which is nice so it doesn't do an external mix I can change tips if I want to and it's a gravity fed with a small bucket here um, uh, so I can use very little without having to worry about trying to do a siphon fed at the bottom or something like that um, so I've been really happy with this um, but any airbrush will you know that you're used to or whatever will work um, but I use, and this isn't even necessary really it just makes my life easier and I enjoy using it um, but this obviously needs a compressor as well um, so airbrush and compressor and the hose between them uh, will be required if you decide to go something like this and then sandpaper so this is what I use when I'm uh, building. Um, it's a uh, quarter inch piece of orange acrylic. I, I literally got this piece of acrylic about eight years ago um, and I, I made it for this purpose. I had access to a lot of acrylic and a laser cutter um, and I learned that the stiffness of this with a little bit of give is nice. Uh, it's just a, just a little bit though. It's not going to give much. And what I do is I put double, uh, really 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 thin double stick tape uh, on the surface of the acrylic and then I'll glue or tape the uh, sandpaper to it and then I'll take a razor blade and cut around the edge so it's perfectly square 
I have a 320 grit on the back here, so it's kind of real, real smooth, and I've got 60 grit here. Um, and it, actually, they both need to be changed out. Um, but uh, this gives me, if I need to eat through a lot of wood really quickly, this gives me that ability, and this gives me my fine control to just kind of uh, sand down uh, just a little bit if I need to. You'll want some masking tape if you're going to be painting with an airbrush. Um, you could also use this to hold things down. Um, this is tape specifically for uh, scale models. It's got uh, a bit of adhesion, but not a lot. Um, and you can cut this into strips. Uh, I think, again, Tamiya makes this or something very similar to it. I don't think this is the Tamiya brand. And this is just 3M uh, edge lock tape. Uh, they make uh, several different stickiness or adhesive levels. Um, there's an orange one. I don't really like the orange. I don't think it sticks enough. Uh, the green seems to stick better for me, and I like it a lot. So any type of masking tape that you're comfortable with will work. Uh, I just use this for painting. For painting, I use uh, the Vallejo or Vallejo uh, Model Air. Uh, these are the two that I used on this model, so the uh, 002 and the 057 uh, black and medium yellow. I also I actually will brush this on. You'll see that later with a paintbrush. I like using the uh, the model air colors for painting with the brush on balsa because it actually leaves the wood grain in and it doesn't just completely coat it so it's a little bit lighter uh, in the finish but it also to me shows the the work that was you know the the balsa side of it, it doesn't just look like plastic that was painted so that's what I use and then obviously paint brushes for that um, so this is the paint brush that I use when I'm doing my tissue um, it's just a a broad tip here, nothing fancy, and it's got this little rubber piece on the back. It's supposed to be for mixing paint or, or doing textures, things like that. Um, but I, sometimes I'll use it to kind of to coax the that tissue in a certain direction because it has a bit of grip to it, but it also has give, so it'll 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 flex um, if I need it to. Uh, more often than not, though, I'll just use a finger, but sometimes I'll use that. And then just paint brushes for doing whatever if I wanted to paint the wood or, or anything like that. Um, any paintbrush will work. This isn't going to be like super detailed as far as this kit. Some people go crazy with them, but I don't. Okay, so I mentioned this uh, bottle earlier, and you can kind of see why I wrote on there, but uh, this is basically a, a mix of alcohol and water. When you're shrinking tissue paper or applying it with the glue stick, you want to uh, use alcohol for that because the glue stick responds well to the alcohol. Um, what I use is 99% isopropyl. Uh, basically, this is, uh, yeah, well, 100%. The percentage here just uh, corresponds to how much water is actually in it. So if you find 70% isopropyl, it just means that it has more water already in it. I prefer to get the 99% so I can just mix the amount of water I want myself. So then I just use any water. I think I even use tap water most of the time, but just for a visual on the screen here. Um, so I'll just mix equal parts of water and alcohol and I'll get a 50% mix here one to one and that tends to work well for me if you use just water to shrink tissue it shrinks um, more so it'll it'll wind up warping your balsa surfaces or even ripping the tissue and isopropyl alcohol won't shrink very much at all um, so kind of using a combination of the two to suit your needs I've just found that one to one mix uh, works well for me you're going to be working on wax paper, um, or you can even use, I think, saran wrap or parchment paper, but I like wax paper the best. Um, and it's just a basic wax paper. There's nothing special about this. Um, but you basically put it be you know, between the wood and your plans so that any glues you use or anything like that, they don't stick to the wax paper. I have noticed, again, that if you accidentally puncture through the wax paper or glue on a puncture point, um, or if you use wax paper twice in the same spot, so put glue on the same spot, the glue will start to stick to it. So I replace this pretty often too, but I think I got this whole roll for like a dollar, so it's not expensive and I don't mind replacing it um, every time I use it. So I'll, I'll, I'll put down, I'll build something, I'll pull that off the board, and then I'll pull the wax paper off and put a new wax paper on if I'm going to be using the same plan. Um, so wax paper You'll need a work surface. I've talked about that a couple of times. Um, if you're going to use the method that I do, which is you know putting the pins in, you need something that will hold the pen, will take the pen you know in without too much wiggle and, and getting loose. So the best thing I found um, is this acoustic soundboard. I got this at Home Depot. 
Um, it's kind of, it's not too large, so you can kind of see if I pan it across, you can see, whoop, bumped the camera there. If I pan it across, you can kind of see the ends. Um, it's, not, it's not huge, um, but it's big enough for what I'm working on, and it tends to cover my, my camera space here, which is nice. Um, but it's about a quarter inch, I'm sorry, about a half inch or three eighths inch thick, I don't remember. Um, but you can see it's just that fiber material, and it accepts the pins uh, really nicely. Oop, drop the pin. Um, so I can just, you know, I can put that in, and it takes a bit of pressure to get it in there, but then it doesn't, it doesn't move, so I, I don't have to worry about if I move it too much. It's not going to loosen up, um, and it's nice, and it obviously it's reusable. Um, so that's, that's what I use as a work surface. You buy that at the, I bought that at Home Depot in a 4x8 sheet. Um, so you get, a, you get a lot of material. I think it was about $12 for the whole thing. So I got more than I needed, but I have different sizes of work boards too, depending on what I'm working on. Uh, as you're finishing up, you're going to need to uh, clear or um, seal the tissue paper so the humidity doesn't affect it too much. This Krylon matte finish is, is what I found that I like to use. Um, this is about eight dollars, and I bought this at Michael's. Um, apparently, you cannot get this at Lowe's or Home Depot near me. Um, Lowe's and Home Depot in my area only sell a Rust-Oleum brand, and uh, not the Krylon, which surprised me. Um, but I was able to find this at Michael's. Um, it is kind of expensive, but you don't use too much of it uh, per model, so this will last you uh, quite a while. Um, a lot of people use um, a butyrate or nitrate dope whenever they're sealing their wood or sealing their tissue. Um, that may work better, to be honest. I don't know. I've never used it, so I just I don't have any experience. I found that um, for the time and the ease and the and the finish that I get out of it, I just I like using this, so that's what I go with. And you'll also want um, an aluminum tube. I use one eighth inch outer diameter with a little um, a thin wall. Um, and this is what the rubber band is going to wrap around at the at the tail end of the aircraft. Uh, this allows you to slide it through. Um, it's sturdy, it's strong, so as the rubber band pulls against it, it won't bend. But having it hollow like this means I can slide a pin through uh, and use it uh, in a stooge mechanism uh, as I'm uh, winding up uh, in this. And so as I'm pulling against it, I can use that wire that's gone through it to hold it inside of a, a block. And then when I'm done, I'll just slide that out and it's good to go. Um, there are a lot of resources for that online, um, but that's what I found works for me. So when it's time to go flying, or when you're preparing for flying, you're going to need um, rubber. Now the rubber that comes in the kit uh, with the uh, PEC polymers and easy built models is actually pretty good. Uh, they do tend to give you the, the tan sport rubber. Uh, but you can buy uh, tan rubber. This is a small quantity. You can buy it by the pound or even quarter pound or something like that. Um, but this is a rubber that's specifically built for um, model flyers. Uh, you don't want to use the gray rubber, and you don't. Um, you, obviously, the the rubber bands you buy it at um, the store are too small. So if you'll notice that this is actually just a long loop of it. Um, let me see if I can get it out here without tying a knot. So it's just a really really long strand, and you'll cut off what you need um, and build your own rubber motors. And we'll cover that in the video a little bit too. Um, I'm still new at that part. I'm not really great at it yet, but I'll show you what I know. Uh, it'll at least maybe get you started. Um, and you'll kind of know, then know what to search for as you're going through. But this is uh, called uh, it is eighth inch tan sport rubber or FAI sport rubber. To lubricate that, um, there's several different things. I've I've heard of many. Uh, Armorall is what I've seen recommended the most. So the Armorall original. Um, that's what I use. It seemed to work okay for me. And a plastic bag. This is what you're going to lubricate the motor in. This is just to keep things from getting messy. So I'll spray the armor inside the bag, put the motor in there, and kind of squish it around like this and make sure it all gets lubricated, and then I can pull it out um, without getting, making too much of a mess. Um, this is called a Crockett hook, C-R-O-K-E-T hook. Um, if you Google that, it'll try to correct it to crochet hook. <laughs> um, so they're kind of hard to find, um, but you can find them on um, like PEC polymers or um, easy built models or Valair. There are several websites that will do this. Um, in fact, you can see I got these ones on easy built. You can also make these. They're not too difficult to make if, you, if you've got some wire and uh, some pliers and some, any kind of bending skill. Um, I've tried. Mine don't look nearly this nice. Um, so I tend to buy them. They're pretty cheap. They come in a pack of six. You can also get different sizes. So this is the size I used for this model. 
um, but you can get big ones and you can get some that are really really big crocket hooks for uh, very large models that'll hold a lot of rubber on them um, but this helps so that when you're when you're winding um, the rubber stretches between this large and that um, tube that I was showing you earlier it'll stretch between these two um, so this will stay in the plane you pull this out you hook up a winder uh, to this which is actually next on my list to show you you hook up the winder to that it's all stretched out you know and you just you give it a wind and then you unhook it and then you'll hook your your uh, propeller back on that so I'll show you all that process later in the video so I think that's gonna wind up being in part 13 I'm not really sure at the moment but that's what I'm planning for but it will be in there and I'll show you that later um, so this is the winder um, this is a 10 to 1 winder, I'll put that on there just so I to remember, just a gear so that you'll notice as I'm spinning this uh, white handle, the hook is spinning a lot more. just keeps things you know, faster for you, so I, if I need to wind it 400 turns on the, on the rubber, I can just wind this 40 times and I've got my turns on there. So this is not a high quality winder, this is probably one of the lower quality, um, but it's fine for my needs. Um, you can get really, really nice winders that can handle a lot of torque. Uh, for you know, about a hundred dollars, um, and if you were going to be, you know, doing very large models with a lot of torque on their motors, then that would be important. Uh, for me, this worked just fine. It was um, pretty cheap, I think, to start out with. So, um, I think it's a good starting point. Um, you'll also want various rulers. I use this one, and then also a 24 inch of the same type, just something to give me a guide if I'm needing it. Uh, various drills. So I use these DeWalt if I need large ones. Um, they work fine, you know, up six, down to 16th. But then I've got this set here. Um, I can't remember who makes this, but it's a little case here. Really nice, got a hole at the top. So I'll pick the number of the drill that I want, the size. I'll slide this over to it. Say I've selected 76, and then I can turn that over. And, oh, that's the one that got stuck at the top. I'll just move it over again to... Uh, 74 and try it again so then that drill bit will just come out so it kind of keeps it organized for you um, without uh, making a mess and you can always have the, the, the bit that you need and then you just slide it right back in and then close it up so I like this um, but it goes all the way down to 80 so this is uh, between 61 and 80 and then this is something that comes in the kit but not this brand you go this is the Isaki brand um, tissue paper I like this much better it has better adhesion it shrinks better um, and it has more durability. It's also lighter than the domestic tissue that comes in in the kit. The, the tissue that comes in the kit is fine, um, but just expect that you'll have a few more wrinkles, and it won't shrink quite as nicely. Um, so one of the big differences here, I'm kind of flipping it over. You'll see one side is very very matte, and one side is very very shiny. Um, so that's kind of a, a trademark, or that's something you can expect from uh, the Asaki brand. Um, I usually buy this several sheets. I only used, I bought five, and I only used one sheet for this model, and had a little bit left over. So um, it goes a long way depending on the size of your model, um, but I like that. And that's it. So that's a lot of materials again, um, but those are. I think I used almost every one of those except maybe like the canopy glue um, on this model. Um, so. As I use them throughout, I might point them out, I might not uh, in the videos, but uh, anyway, so let's get started building.